Hi everyone, I partnered up with CLX to give away a custom Armada Edition Horus PC. It's free to enter, and the details on how to do so can be found in the description. Honestly, I'm low-key jealous of whoever wins this, so good luck to everyone entering. Yoshi has been a constant source of backlash for as long as I can remember. He's very hard to hit with his amazing air mobility, his double jump is a frame 1 get out of jail free card with armor, he has 0 to 70s that only require the Yoshi to get one read, his frame data is really good, and Nintendo replaced one of his best skins from Smash 4 with well, a hideous monster if I'm being nice. It's safe to say that there are some annoying things about Yoshi, but just like every other character except Little Mac, he does possess weaknesses to balance him out. If you can abuse his flaws, you may one day find yourself enjoying the Yoshi matchup like me. I'm crazy, I know. Now, even if you follow every tip in this video, the better player should be the one winning most of the time, so don't go expecting to JV4 atop Yoshi anytime soon. But it does help to know and abuse where Yoshi struggles so you can, well, end up being the better player. If you've never played a Yoshi before, for, he has a few gimmicks to watch out for so you don't get thrown off guard. There's his air mobility, which is the best in the game, making it tricky to know where he's going sometimes. His full hop and double jump are both some of the highest in the game. His double jump also has heavy armor that only goes away when attacks reach a certain knockback threshold. When this happens, the attack will pretty much send him nowhere. He has vertical combos from landing aerials and tilts that do about 30 guaranteed damage, and around 70 if he gets a read on your escape option. He has a pretty big frame 6 narrow out of shield that makes shield pressure a bit harder against him than many other characters. He can harass you with eggs, whether he's camping or simply recovering. He's solid at beating shields with neutral B, down air, and down B, all of which are particularly effective on platforms. Down air does a bunch of damage, and he can do rising down air from the ledge or when recovering. Speaking of recovery, he has many options to mix that up, such as eggs, double jump, double jump with eggs or aerials, air dodge, and down B to the ledge. He has no big disjoints besides neutral B and grab, which aren't enormous by any means. Then at kill percent, he'll look for lots of landing back airs, and anti airs in the form of up air, up tilt, and up smash. Nair also kills at the edge around 140. Phew, that was a lot of stuff. Knowing Yoshi's gimmicks won't automatically make you play better against him, but I mentioned them so you guys won't get too thrown off guard if you fight one. Now, I haven't gone over Yoshi's entire game plan, but I assume many of you are watching this video because you struggle against this character, so you kind of have at least an okay idea of what he looks for at the different percent ranges. If you want more details on how Yoshi plays, I suggest watching Aiza's fantastic Art of Yoshi video, or either of my Yoshi guys. Alright, now on to how to beat this guy. Camp and play passive against Yoshi. Okay, I know, this doesn't sound like the most fun strategy in the world. But, I mean, it can be fun if the Yoshi gets angry. Yoshi struggles against camping for a few different reasons. 1. He has one of the lowest short hops in the game, meaning he has to shield or full hop over a lot of projectiles. As you can see here, he can't short hop over Wolf's Blaster. 2. Yoshi's approach options are pretty predictable. When Yoshi approaches from the air, his landing hitboxes are hard to get out spaced by, as none of them are disjointed. Plus, he has an incredibly slow fall speed, giving you plenty of time to prepare and shield or stuff him out. When you're camping Yoshi, he's often going to approach from the air. He simply has more viable options this way as opposed to approaching from the ground, because of his amazing air drift. This is where using anti-airs with decent range can be very useful. Moves like sword attacks, snakes up tilt, Palutena's nair, and many others can outrange most of Yoshi's aerials, and they're fast enough to stuff out the ones they don't outrange like fair and bear. It is important to time your move properly, of course. If Yoshi descends towards you, hoping to land with a up air or neutral air, throw your move out quickly before he can use it, or space yourself outside his small range. If he tries to abuse his range on forward air or back air, challenge it before the hitbox comes out. Yoshi's a huge jumper, so you're going to be abusing him a lot in the air. Another way to beat Yoshi's approaches is maneuvering yourself outside the range of his aerials, then running back in and punishing with dash attack or dash grab. The punish isn't always guaranteed unless you're pretty close to the Yoshi, so try to stay just outside his range. Back on the topic of camping, try to be smart while doing it. Don't just mind spam a million Young Link arrows at the side of the level and expect to win, as he can certainly beat that. Mix up the options you camp with, mix up what moves you use to avoid or stuff out his approaches to make it hard for him to know what to look for, throw projectiles in the air once in a while, again since Yoshi's always up there, and don't camp the entire match or your patterns will get more and more predictable over time. Shielding against Yoshi I've heard differing opinions on whether or not constantly blocking is a good strategy against this character. Some say it's great, as it allows you to avoid all his scariest combo starters, while others think you're just gonna get shield broken or neutral bead if you use it too much. I personally believe, like pretty much everything else I talk about in this video, it's best in moderation. All of Yoshi's scariest combo starters are attacks. His grab leads to one up air at best, and that's if he's near frame perfect and you don't DI out. So, like camping, shielding makes it hard for Yoshi to get anything started. For this reason, I recommend using shield a decent amount, as even some of Yoshi's combo starters are unsafe when blocked. Forward tilt and up tilt are both minus 16, back air is minus 9, and fair is minus 7, so many characters 
will have something to punish these moves with, especially at close range. His landing up air and neutral air are both minus 3, which is safe against characters without privilege. To punish those, I recommend holding shield and waiting for what Yoshi does after the landing aerial. There's no way the Yoshi isn't going to push a button after landing right in your face like this. If he does something like jab, spot dodge, or shield, you can punish. And even if he retreats safely with a jump away or something similar, at least you'll have the information that he does that, so you can abuse it the next time he lands with one of these aerials. Shielding, however, isn't completely broken against Yoshi. His neutral B is a good command grab that can counter this. It has decent range, little lag, is B reversible, and has solid damage potential. Thankfully, if you read neutral B, it's easy to punish by using a move that stuffs it out, jumping over it, or using a spot dodge. My suggestion is to start the match by shielding Yoshi's aerials to prevent any easy damage early on, then start expecting and beating the neutral B once he's failed at landing his combo starters a few times, and is conditioned to use a different option. Of course, every Yoshi player is different, and this may not work on everyone, but it's good as a general game plan against most Yoshis, especially those who tend to get thirsty for quick and easy combos. You can also use shield to bait neutral B. If Yoshi's about to land on you, try blocking to make landing neutral B seem like an appealing option, then stuff it out. This way, it's like a two for one. You bait an approach with shield, then stuff out either his neutral B or his aerial with an aerial of your own. Now, if you do still end up getting neutral B, you can buffer an attack out of it. The last input you perform while in the egg is what you'll end up using when leaving. This can be used against you or in your favor. If you mash buttons mindlessly, it could result in you inputting the wrong move and getting punished. Therefore, my suggestion is to start your mash by using the buttons or control stick, then once you're about to get out, start mashing using only the input you want to escape the egg with. This option can be an attack, air dodge, jump, or nothing at all, and you get 7 frames of invincibility during the startup of whatever you choose. Anyway, I'm just letting you guys know this since even some good players miss input out of the egg. The two main situations to keep buffering in mind are when the Yoshi stays really close to the egg and when you're at death percent. If Yoshi, say, smashes the egg to get some extra damage, try mashing very quickly and using a fast attack to get a guaranteed punish. Then if you're at kill percent and Yoshi's standing by your egg, mix up the timing for when you get out and try not using the same option you've been escaping the egg with throughout the whole match to prevent Yoshi from reading it. Yoshi's other ways to beat shield are shield poking, shield pressure, shield breaks, and cross-ups. To avoid a shield poke, which he'll often try to do with back air or down air, angle your shield towards his move. Afterwards, try staying back and only using air dodge, spot dodge, or roll as defensive options to regenerate shield health, assuming you don't hit Yoshi and regenerate automatically. Retreating to the ledge works too. To deal with shield pressure, don't use the same option to get out every time, and mix up your timing for when you escape. He'll often shield pressure with down tilt, which is minus 9 and totally punishable by a lot of moves if he misses his spacing. To not get shield broken, you only really have to worry about down B, which is 100% reactable, as the strong hitbox comes out frame 27. Either spot dodge or roll away. This, however, is impossible to react to, so you have to predict it. Try to avoid blocking too much if your shield is low for this reason. It can't break a full shield. Down air doesn't break shields, by the way. Even on platforms, it only shield pokes. Against Yoshi's cross-ups, don't do a shield grab if he drifts super far, unless you're 100% sure he is in front of you. Try using an out-of-shield option that covers both sides of your character if you have one. If not, pay close attention to which side Yoshi's on after his move. Like I said earlier, shielding isn't broken against Yoshi, as he has ways to deal with it, but it can be good in many instances, especially if you're good at stuffing out or avoiding the moves he uses to beat shielding. But the best time to use shield against this character, at least in my opinion, is at kill percent. Yoshi has no kill throws, besides forward throw by the edge of Bridge of Elden at 300 with a 2.0 launch rate. All eight planets have aligned, and Nintendo actually announced a new direct, so many Yoshis will depend on you getting shield poked or dropping shield to back air to get a kill. Make sure to hold shield throughout the entire duration of back air and angle your shield so this doesn't happen. If you face Yoshis often, you might be used to seeing a lot of this at kill percent. If the player gets predictable enough with their back air patterns, you can challenge their jumping habits with dash attack or something similar. Now, your shield might eventually get pretty low at kill percent and you won't be able to use it anymore, so you'll have to mix it up between rolling, jumping, and attacking out of pressure. I'd say rolling and attacking are ever so slightly better than jumping because many Yoshis are used to and good at punishing aerial habits with up air, and they're often trying to get you to jump, but obviously don't spam any of them. Avoid Nair out of shield. If there's one move that will truly test your timing and spacing on shield, it's Yoshi's neutral air. It's fast at frame 6, but not impossible to play around. First, there's a possibility that your playstyle forces you to get Nair out of shield more than you really should. Many players have a habit of landing with aerials and spot dodging right after to avoid a grab. This makes sense against a lot of characters, as many people do like to shield grab. Obviously, if it's a habit though, you shouldn't do it all the time against anyone, but when fighting Yoshi in particular, it's a huge no-no. If a move is minus 5 on shield or lower and you shield after landing, you shouldn't be getting nared if you time it well enough. However, every character in this game except Bayonetta has a spot dodge 
that comes out frame 3 when not stale. Meaning even if you land with a very safe minus 3 move against Yoshi and you spot dodge right after, you'll still get nared every time. So don't do that. Always expect nair. Yoshi only shield grabs as a mix up. The same principle applies for landing and jumping, landing then attacking, landing then rolling, etc. With minor differences in frame data. There are several ways to either avoid or straight up beat nair out of shield. Again, it's not impossible to deal with. Here are the best methods that people have used against me or other Yoshi players. Land with a safe attack. Again, minus 5 or safer. Shield, then follow Yoshi's drift and punish. If your character has an aerial that's safe enough, you can use it to bait nair out of shield. If not, you could still do this by landing then shielding without even using an aerial, as long as you're confident that Yoshi will nair. After you block the nair, some lower level Yoshis probably won't drift much if at all, so you can punish their nair lag with a quick move that reaches it. But experienced Yoshis will usually know to drift away or into you at least a little bit, so anticipate that, react, and punish accordingly. If you can't reach his drift in time to get anything guaranteed, punish what he does after the nair. Yoshi can counter this landing aerial to shield strategy with shield grab, but like I said earlier, this guy gets pocket change combos from grabs, so it's not too bad if this happens. If Yoshi starts grabbing and you read it, you can do a landing aerial then a move right after to stuff this incredibly fast frame 18 option out. Use tomahawks. Lots of Yoshis will wait for you to land with an aerial and then nair, since if they nair too early, they could trade or straight up lose to the aerial. So if you don't even use one and simply land with a grab, you can throw them off guard. The counterplay to this is usually for Yoshi to either spot dodge or do an early nair, so mix it up by landing with aerials once in a while to beat these options out. Bonus points if the aerials you use are safe enough to not get nared. Land with a jab or multi-hit. Some Yoshi players will autopilot a nair as soon as a move teases the possibility of hitting their shield. These moves will stuff his jump before neutral air comes out. This is especially good against the major crayon eaters. Use fast block strings. Ryu's nair is minus one on shield and his down tilt is frame two, meaning there are only three frames in between the two moves for Yoshi to do anything if they hit his shield. Yoshi's nair out of shield takes six frames to come out, so if he tries to use it on Ryu's landing neutral air, he'll lose to the down tilt. Lots of other characters can do the same kind of thing, like Zero Suit with her nair to jab, or Mario with the same sequence. However, the Yoshi might be smart enough to shield your entire string and punish afterwards. If you think this will happen, you'll have many options. You could go for landing aerial to grab, retreat, delay your jab, shield, and try to react to what Yoshi does instead. You can get creative. Those are the best strategies I've seen for beating this move, but I'm sure there are more if you ever come up with any ideas. One of the simplest methods that you don't have to think much about is just remembering to space your attacks at a far enough distance. If you do get nared, you may get sent into a tech situation, especially at mid percents. Remember to mix up your tech option, because if he reads it, he can get a meaty combo. I personally rarely cover tech away because of how hard of a commitment it is compared to the others, but I certainly can't speak for every Yoshi. Edgeguarding Yoshi Yoshi's recovery is pretty good in this game. You're not always going to successfully edgeguard him simply because of how many mix-ups he has, so if you fail, at least try to maintain stage control and shield or jump over his pesky X. But if you can read or react to how the Yoshi player typically likes to recover, there is hope for messing with him off stage. If Yoshi throws an egg right after getting sent off the level, plenty of characters can position themselves under it and do a rising aerial to punish. Many Yoshis have this habit because the egg gives him vertical height without having to use a jump, and not a lot of people punish it. Another easy thing to punish is if Yoshi does any move during or after his double jump. This cancels his armor and you'll be free to challenge him. Again, lots of Yoshis like to do this, often to try to score some cheap damage or get opponents off of them. Assuming you successfully hit Yoshi out of it by outspacing him though, as long as Yoshi gets sent far enough off stage, all you'll need to cover will be his eggs and air dodge. Again, eggs can be punished by going under them and hitting Yoshi. Also, the more eggs the Yoshi uses, the less distance they'll give him until he touches the stage again. So if you rinse and repeat this process, you might just take his stock. If Yoshi's forced to air dodge or you just happen to read it, there are several ways to beat the option depending on your character. One of the best ways is by using highly spammable moves like Pikachu's jab, Luigi's down tilt, or Rob's down tilt to give him a very small window to make it back. Besides that, you can time a low hitting move like Palutena's down tilt or Lucina's forward smash to hit after his air dodge. The longer lasting the move, the better. Running off stage and doing a drop zone aerial is a bit riskier, but definitely still doable. If you want to challenge Yoshi's heavy armor, it's good to know what percent Yoshi needs to be at for your move to inflict enough knockback. For reference, Peach's back air, which I'd say has a pretty standard amount of strength for a back air, breaks the armor at 73, unstaled with no rage. Feel free to test out the specific percents for your moves, of course. After breaking Yoshi's armor, he might try to avoid getting hit again by using an attack or air dodge. If you hit him off stage after this, though, you can start edge guarding him without a jump. Other Yoshis might simply drift towards the stage, which can be covered by throwing out another quick hitbox. Pay attention to your specific opponent's recovery patterns and punish those, but don't expect to get an edge guard immediately after breaking his armor, again, since it sends him nowhere. Down B to the ledge is pretty punishable if you read it. You just have to position yourself close enough to Yoshi and
and hit him preemptively. Most counters beat the move, and wind boxes such as Mario's Flood can kill the Yoshi for doing it at any percent. Again, you're not going to have a 100% success rate with edge guarding Yoshi, but hopefully these tips help you understand his recovery a little better. A few more things before I go. Make sure to tech down tilt at kill percent. It sends at a very low angle, so you'll usually want to tech early. If you don't, you'll get Pikachu'd. Eggs have a surprisingly high amount of lag after Yoshi throws them. The entire egg throwing animation lasts 55 frames. To have the highest chance of punishing them, I recommend parrying, jumping over the eggs, or running under them. Sometimes you can even regular shield and punish though, if you're close enough. Yoshi's a huge jumper, like I mentioned earlier, so if he's in the corner or being pressured, you might want to consider this as his most likely escape option. That and there, of course, obviously doesn't apply to everybody, but something to keep in mind. Try to get off platforms as soon as possible against Yoshi, and don't shield for excessive periods of time. Down air and neutral B are great at covering shield, so you'll usually want to jump off it if you see Yoshi starting to come towards a platform, preparing to challenge you. Yoshi's best stages, in my opinion, are Yoshi's and Battlefield, since he can abuse his great platform pressure and extend his combos on platforms. His worst are the ones that don't let him abuse platforms like FD and Kalos. When getting comboed, the optimal DI is out. If Yoshi hits you with the tip of F tilt, this DI will force him to settle for F tilt nair instead of F tilt to 80 up airs. Mix up your escape options as well, but that's just general smash advice. If Yoshi ever gets away with a double jump, whether it's out of a combo or when recovering, it may be impossible to challenge. So my best advice is to just try and maintain stage control when this happens. And there you have it. Now go out there and beat all the Yoshis just like our friend Mario in the Super Nintendo days. Thanks for watching and see you all next week.